What's up, hobby friends? And welcome to my three-part video tutorial series on how to paint Colossus from Marvel Crisis Protocol. This second video focuses entirely on painting the non-metal metal skin. Hey. To paint the non-metal metal on the skin, we're using AK Rubber Black, Ash Gray, medium sea gray, pale sand, and white. So the first big part of Colossus, once we're done the base that we're gonna be working on is in painting the metallic skin. Now this can feel a little daunting at first, but I'll try and break this down into some simple ideas and concepts, walk you through the recipe, and then uh, show you in part sort of what to expect when painting this kind of material or texture. So uh, very briefly, the recipe we're using, um, we're going to be using AK Rubber Black, which I've already off camera applied a base coat. No one needs to see me apply a base coat to a model. That should be something you know how to do. So we've done that. You want a nice even coat over the entire thing. And then from there, we're highlighting up through AK Ash Gray, Medium Sea Gray, Pale Sand, and White. And this is essentially a, a warm progression through gray tones all the way up into the white highlights. The reference that I'll be using for this is the Colossus color palette from the Deadpool films. So where most of my Marvel models typically have a very blue tone, non-metal model recipe, I wanted something a little different, something a little sharper, and it was a good opportunity to play around with a different color recipe this time. This will also help because um, we have the Sentinel arm, which is going to be blue, and I'm going to be using that blue non-metal metal recipe on the arm itself. So just having different um, color recipes or color distinctions on the model itself helped or will help to create a bit of a, a separation in the objects and add a little bit of variety to the model. An important thing to first consider when we're painting non-metal metal is the reflectivity of the surface. And that will dictate how sudden our jumps between light and shadow will be and how quickly we will go from light to dark to light. One of the key selling points of non-metal metal is to have our bright brights beside our dark darks and having more of these jumps from bright to dark to bright to dark will dictate how reflective or how chrome the material is. Having less of them means that we're looking at something that's a bit more um, matte, maybe a bit more of a burnished uh, steel or burnished aluminum surface. I'm going to be aiming for something sort of in between, maybe a little bit more reflective in the face and in the upper arms, and then as it gets to the back, maybe a little darker and uh, without a lot of those reflected highlights going in, both as a way of staying true to the film reference where he is sort of um, more of a burnished matte steel kind of look, and also to help maintain the overall, I guess, definition of the muscle on the model. When painting non metal model, it's always important to remember that we're still painting an object that has to obey the laws of, of light. Light is going to impact it just like it would any other part, like the boot or the um, suit of the body. We're just also handling reflections, reflections of light happening from objects immediately adjacent to the metal, and then reflections from objects in the environment, either from the base or imagined around, reflecting into the surface. This is compounded by the fact that because we are painting a musculature, a sculpted muscle form on the body, we have to consider both being able to convincingly sell the form while still handling those reflections and it's, it can be very easy to lose that definition, lose that basic volume when attending to reflection. So I think it's um, helpful that this model is um, supposed to be more of a matte finish as opposed to something hyper-reflective. When we begin highlighting up, we're also going to be ignoring a lot of the striations, a lot of these um, armor plate lines, these separations in between the different plates. 
We'll go back in and black line them with our rubber black afterwards. But when we start our highlighting and our shadowing, I want to ignore them because I want to be able to apply my brush strokes in a way where my highlights carry across the entire surface. One thing I do highly recommend um, as you're painting this model is to quickly look up basic human anatomy, especially for areas like here in the ribs. We have a series of interlocking muscles that are also overlaid by the lines, and it's very easy to lose this form when um, trying to maintain those separate armor components. So you want to take care to make sure that um, as you're highlighting up, you're, you're not losing sight of that anatomy. So we're going to start with our ash gray, and we're going to apply our first highlight. Now remember when we're painting musculature, we want to be able to connect all the different forms. Um, if we were painting Colossus, if we were painting a regular um, naked torso, say on Hulk, we would want to be connecting all of these muscles in their highlights because they would be covered by a layer of skin. And we want to treat Colossus the same way. Remember should we carry those highlights up into the arms? and wrap around into the back as well. From ash gray, we're going to work into our medium sea gray. The jump in values between the two colors is very sharp. Um, it's a very big gap, so you're going to want to mix up some intermediary colors. And I would recommend um, not trying to perfectly smooth your blends first. Make sure that you block in your, your lights and shadows, and then go back in afterwards with mixes of your different colors and work to smooth out the blends. There's no sense um, trying to perfectly blend up a surface on, especially a metallic object, because if you get the lighting wrong, you're gonna have to go back in and repaint it anyways. So it's important that we um, establish these, these values correctly first. And it helps to be sketchy at this phase because we're not committed to any particular blend, any particular brush stroke. If we have to correct something or change anything, um, it didn't take us long to reach that point. And so we're not as um, committed to, to keeping something on or that's already on the model. So this is where we're at right now with our first sketch pass all the way up to medium C gray. And you can see just how rough and sketchy I've been. I've been focusing mainly on the primary light source. I haven't really considered any sort of reflective light yet. I'm mainly looking to define the forms of the muscle. And we'll worry about reflected light afterwards as we continue to refine and um, sharpen up our highlighting. We're going to keep working on our sketching right now, and we're going to work from medium sea gray up into pale sand. Once again, you're going to want to mix um, a couple of intermediary steps. Uh, don't just jump right into the pale sand, otherwise you're going to be blending back down a lot. And we're going to start to work our way towards our brightest highlight spots. Now, much like with the medium sea gray, we're not overly concerned with perfecting our blends at the moment. All we're looking to do is place our, our values. You can see I'm just continuing to work on whatever you got existing. And 
the goal is to connect all the muscles and to make sure that um, I've considered the highlighting according to my primary light source. So um, what I typically like to do with tabletop miniatures is to always light the model from three quarters top down directly where they're facing. So my light source is gonna be right here. I haven't gotten to the hands or the face yet. I'll cover in particular the face afterwards. I'm mainly focusing on the areas where there are these serrated armor plates I have to worry about. I'll continue to work my way up into pure pale sand. And now that we've done our first sketch pass with pale sand, it's now time to start smoothing out our blends and working on refining what we have on the model, sharpening up our highlights, as well as starting to introduce some reflected highlights. So we're gonna do our first pass of smoothing with the airbrush. Uh, you can hand paint this doing glazes by hand, but I just like to use the airbrush for expediency. I have a mixture in the airbrush and we're gonna do all of our mixes in sort of the same way, very watercolor, very diluted. So this is probably one part paint to five or six parts water. We have the compressor dialed fairly low, about 10 or 15 PSI. And then we're gonna be spraying from underneath where typically when we airbrush, we spray from the direction of our highlights we're gonna spray from the direction of our shadows. And the goal is to essentially spray some of our midtones and work our way backwards into our shadow to uh, smooth out what we have on the model. So what I have in the airbrush right now is medium sea gray with just a touch of the ash gray. And this is gonna be my focus on midtones. The technique is to basically pull back on the trigger release a thin layer of color onto the model, and then quickly release the trigger to air dry. Spray, air dry. And essentially what we're doing is we're misting on a very thin layer of color and progressively drying it and building up those layers. And by spraying from the direction of our shadows, we're maintaining, or we're gonna try and maintain our highlights as much as possible. Although on this model, it is gonna be a little trickier because of how subtle the, um, the shapes and shadows are. But that's okay, because once we finish this airbrush stage, we're gonna go back in by hand and refine those highlights again. And you can see just, I'm quickly working my way across the model, spraying a little bit, air drying it, and then jumping around just to um, make sure that I don't have any wet spots when I come back to airbrush another pass. And just by slowly building up these layers, we're starting to smooth out our rough sketching. And we're gonna keep doing this. We're just gonna keep working our midtones and shadows, and we're gonna keep mixing our um, grays, working down into ash gray, and eventually some rubber black. And we're gonna keep working on smoothing out our blends and refining those shadows. And you see with the airbrushing done, it's smoothed out a lot of the, uh, the midtones and shadows. I've deliberately kept some of my highlights, especially in the rib cage and on thighs. Um, quite sharp just in terms of I want that, that separation between the uh, brights and the darks. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back in by hand. We're gonna start mixing in with our medium sea gray, our pale sand, um, and we're gonna start polishing up our highlights and introducing some reflected lights and shadows. So with the highlights, go back in with pale sand. You wanna make sure that your paint is nice and diluted now. The goal is to glaze in very smooth highlights, or at least um, smooth enough, depending on how reflective you want the metal to be. Um, we want our brightest highlights to be that pure pale sand. 
And then in some of these larger um, muscle areas, so for example, I'm looking at the thigh here. Um, what I might do is I might take some of that ash gray and medium sea gray. And depending on how bright or dark the area is, go back in and start adding some reflected highlights. And then get some of that uh, ash gray and more black and blend those areas out. Make sure that your paints are nice and diluted so that when you apply them, um, you can sort of stipple and glaze them on and smooth out your transitions and get some nice smooth blends in there. Now this is the most um, tedious part of the model I've found, but it is the central focus. So I think it's worth spending the time to really um, polish up your highlights or blending shadows and really just um, make sure that everything pops and it's uh, well attended to in terms of all the details. Now with all of our highlighting them, and before we finish off with any of our white highlights, we want to go in and uh, black line all of the armor paneling and then highlight both edges. So we're going to start with the black lining. We're going to use our base coat rubber black. Get your paint nice and diluted for this, get a nice sharp brush. And you're going to want to take the time for this just very carefully and very gently paint into all of the recessed lines. And once we're done the black lining, we're going to go in with our medium sea gray and pale sands, and we're going to edge highlight every single panel. So we're going to do both the top and bottom edges. And the reason being, of course, when we get the light um, on the primary light source, bouncing off of the top edges, I imagine some of that reflected light bouncing off onto the bottom edges. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the pale sands and medium sea gray depending on where it's situated on the front or the back to edge highlight every single edge. And then we're going to go back in with our white and finalize some of our brightest highlights and edge highlight um, some points on the top edge. Much like with the black lining, go in with a nice diluted uh, paint, sharp brush and just take your time Now, in spots where pale sands might be a little too bright, for example, on this uh, inner part of the thigh right here, we can switch to our medium sea gray and continue that edge highlight. And then because we're working with nice diluted paint, it's very easy to transition the highlights together. Do your best to keep the paint out of the recesses, but if you uh, do overpaint or screw up a little bit, that's okay. Um, some diluted rubber black will correct those lines nice and easy. So painting the uh, face and the head is like painting any other normal head. We're going to highlight according to our light source and then paint it like we would a skin tone. So we're working through the same five colors, rubber black, ash gray, medium sea gray, pale sand, and we'll eventually get to white. We'll wait on the white to do it over the entire model. So I've already gone to this about halfway up to uh, pure medium sand here. And you can see for the most part, my highlights are fairly stock standard. I have exaggerated a couple of highlights, uh, particularly on the hairline where the forehead meets the hair, I'm going to be doing a strong highlight here because it's a change in planes of two metallic surfaces 
we're going to get some light bouncing in between that corner right there. Um, we'll pull it along down the side of the head as well. And then when we get to the jawbone and the, the cheek, the jawline, we want to make sure that we put a fairly uh, strong highlight on the bottom as well. For the same reason, we're getting some reflected light off of the neck as well as the suit underneath. And before we paint the final white highlight on the metallic elements, I want to do a couple of glazes of some of the environmental colors are going to be bouncing off of the armor. So we're going to get some blue off of the sentinel arm. We're going to get some purple off of the sentinel head. And then we're just going to have some uh, gentle bounces of red from his gauntlets and from the boots and suit. So for the purple, we're going to be using deep purple, which was sort of our um, mid bright tone highlight from the sentinel head. For the blue, we're going to be doing glazes of aquatic turquoise with uh, a hint of light Prussian, which we'll be using to paint the blue. And then for the red, we're doing a mix of burnt red and blood red, which we'll be using to paint the red. So we'll start with the purple. I'm just going to get a nice uh, watercolor glaze on the palette and then very gently and very softly just glaze in this purple underneath. And we're just going to do a couple of passes for this purple, keeping it nice and light. The foot is um, fairly high up from where the sentinel head is, and so we're really only going to get some strong highlights, um, or some, some strong reflected highlights, right near the back of the knee, I think. And the reason we're doing this first before the white highlights is we can then go back in afterwards with the white, polish up any um, edges that we need to highlight, and of course, the white highlights should be pure. There shouldn't be any sort of local color on there. For the blue, we're going to get some reflections on the back of the head and the top. So we'll mix that light Prussian and aquatic turquoise together. And we'll do exactly the same thing. Get a nice watercolor mix going on. And we'll just gently glaze this color onto the metal. We'll probably do some of this glazing on the top of the arm as well because of its proximity to the uh, sentinel hand. Remember, we just want a soft hint of the color, so we don't want to do uh, too heavy of a glaze. Just enough to imply the, the bounce happening, but not enough to change the color overall of the metal. I think we'll get a little bit on his forehead here and on his side of the head. And then for the red, um, that mix of burnt red and blood red. Maybe leaning more uh, heavily in the burnt red so it's a little darker. And we'll focus on areas like uh, the inside of this thigh where it's bouncing off of his foot.
on the thigh right here where we're getting some bounce from his gauntlet. We'll get a little bit on his hand from the leg. And then we'll get a little bit underneath uh, here from the gauntlet as well. I think we'll probably have some red as well on this side from his other gauntlet. And I'm going to place it in areas where there is no blue. And as always, just keeping the glazes nice and soft. It's always easier to build up than it is to paint over. So gradually build up your color. Don't try and do it all at once. And finally, we want to take some pure white and we want to apply our final highlights onto the armor. So um, focus on the large areas where we have uh, the facings are angled strongly towards our light source. We'll do a gentle glaze of white just to really brighten up a few key spots. And then on all the edges that are directly facing towards the light source, so mainly from the top, uh, we're going to give them a sharp white highlight as well. There's no reason to go overboard with this white. Just focus on a few key spots and keep everything nice and sharp. Well, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more awesome weekly content. And don't forget to check out my other video series, both for this model, as well as others I've uploaded to my YouTube channel. As always, until next time, happy hobbying.